What a day it was. Oh, good Lord, good Lord. And uh, God be praised, God be praised, God be praised. There, I, I, I say it with, with pride and with gratitude and with honor, and I make no apologies. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You don't see that much on TV, do you? Well, you have. You may again. As a Catholic, as a person who cares about the, the moral future of my world, of your world, I rejoice, and, and so should you. Mainstream media, well, not all of you, but many of you, oh, shame on you. As the white smoke blew, and before we even knew who the Pope was to be, Peter Mansbridge, and Peter's a nice man, I, I like him, but first he told us it was black smoke when it was clearly white, okay, but then he said, and I quote, will it be a conservative or someone more flexible on the issues? Ordaining women, gay marriage, the abuse scandal, corruption, end of quote. Oh, Peter, flexible, flexible's good, <laughs> not being flexible is bad, you, you know you were tendentious. And, and these may be issues for you, and they may be issues for your buddies, but they're not issues for the church and for Catholicism. Poverty, injustice, racism, war, suffering, these are the issues, not the, the fetishes and the obsessions of, of Western wealthy liberals in their declining, decaying little world. The new Pope, Francis I, is the 266th pontiff, and is someone who really does know the real issues of genuine need and, and genuine vulnerability. Jorge Bellolio, a brilliant theologian trained in Germany, an, an orthodox but forward-thinking, very progressive man, a, a saintly man, actually, and a man of the poor. He has spoken out in favor of the underclass and those who are without, well, without food and warmth and support and shelter, but also affirm, for example, church teaching on, on homosexuality and life and, and, and birth control. Look, it's this, no compromise on truth, but no compromise on love. So, as well as maintaining Catholic morality, he teaches the importance of respecting individuals who may be gay. He strongly opposed legislation introduced in 2010 by the Argentine government in Buenos Aires to allow same-sex marriage, and because of that, the Argentinian president said, the church's tone was reminiscent of medieval times and the Inquisition. Well, one is a show in Toronto, the other one's a Monty Python sketch, as far as I know. Look, it's nonsense, of course, but, well, it's what you'd expect. And you know what? He will face a lot more of this in the future. Wait till the honeymoon is over. He lived as archbishop in an apartment rather than the Episcopal palace. He cooked for himself. He revered his father, the Italian railway worker immigrant from Turin. He was one of the first men to rush to the Jewish community center in Argentina, I think it was 96, wasn't it, when that terrible bombing took place, killed so many people, to hold and care for the wounded. He has done, by the way, so, so much for Catholic Jewish relations in Argentina. That's still an open wound in, in that country. There are more than 500 million Catholics in Latin America, and he speaks for them. There are billions of poor people in the world, and he speaks for them. But please know this. The Pope, no Pope, what, can't change Catholic teaching. It's not will not, but cannot. More than 250 Popes, some of them, frankly, not great men, some of them, to be absolutely candid, deeply flawed men, but none of them have taught heresy, none of them have contradicted one another. The Church is, sorry and all that, but the Church is the Church. Catholicism is, again, I'm so terribly sorry, Catholicism. It cannot suddenly allow the, uh, the killing of unborn babies, cannot suddenly agree with a, a bastardization of true, genuine marriage, cannot suddenly approve of sex and sexuality being only about self-gratification, cannot contradict scripture and ordain women just to be fashionable, cannot suddenly deny the, the truth of God and the truth of Christ Jesus, but Pope Francis will reform the Vatican. He will shake that place up a bit, and it needs to be brought into the modern age in terms of communication. You can't even get internet access in the Vatican, for goodness sake. The banking system has to be transparent. The abuse scandal is of the past, but anyone found guilty today, and it tends to be the detritus of 30, 40 years ago, you're gone. 
Now, Pope John Paul, he was asked once, Pope John Paul II, how many people work at the Vatican? He said, about half. Yeah, it's true. Pope Francis will beguile people, though, because he's orthodox, yes, but also so supportive of the poor. But you see, the Roman Catholic Church looks neither left nor right. It looks up, as should all of us, all of us, on this very, very special day. The living God bless Pope Francis I. I would love to be in Rome right now. Alas, no, but the great David Aiken is. David, welcome to you. What is the mood on the ground there? Surprise? Oh, yes, yeah, surprise, thrilled, uh, to, to put it mildly. I mean, you saw the reaction, uh, absolute joy, screaming, cheers. Uh, they have a new pope. Uh, that is the most important thing, of course. And, uh, and I, I've been getting reaction, uh, Michael, from Canadian Catholics who are very happy to see a new pope, Francis I, of all the people that I could be standing beside, the tens of thousands here in Rome for this event, of all the people I was standing beside when his name was read out, an Argentinian priest, if you can believe that, absolutely gobsmacked standing beside me, overwhelmed by it, uh, Father Eduardo Mangiarati, I'm sure I've butchered that name, mm. but absolutely thrilled, of course. There's an Argentinian beside me. And some of the similar same problems in Argentina that we have in Canada, notably, not enough young men join in the priesthood. And so he believes, Father Eduardo, um, they're mourning the fact they're going to lose a very good bishop, Cardinal of Buenos Aires. He is well respected in the country, but they think this is very much going to help the Roman Catholic Church in Argentina, at least. And certainly the feeling is in, in Latin America generally. Mm. 500 million Catholics in Latin America in a continent that has European style wealth in Argentina and also third world poverty in parts of, of, of Central America. So in, in that way, I think it'll be very, very liberating. It will be. And, and as we're learning more about the, the first Francis I, he has really staked his ministry on a defense of the poor. And I asked Father Eduardo, do we take the tip that he called himself Francis from that famous Francis of Assisi, who, as we all know, was, you know, objected himself, was a beggar, uh, renounced all worldly goods. And, and, and yes, this is, this is his inspiration for his papacy. He has been a robust defender of the poor in Latin America. He has challenged bishops whenever they've met that the church must do more about the poor, not only in Latin America, but around the world. And, uh, and so it seems very fitting that he is going to be Pope Francis. Mm. It, 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 it's wonderful on many levels. One in particular is that he will, if you like, beguile people because it's not right or left. The church is, is not about socialism or capitalism. It's about Catholicism. Whilst being theologically orthodox, and there won't be any movement on the moral issues, he has this huge outreach for and empathy with and sympathy for the poor. And I think some people will be rather confused by that in a good way. Uh, I suspect you might be right, and you're right on some of the social issues. I mean, they, 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 of course, as, as we've talked about, the cardinals were not going to elect somebody who was going to move in a, in a you know, westernized version of, of a liberal approach to these things. Certainly, uh, Francis is... Uh, a ste uh, he's been a steadfast opponent of abortion, of euthanasia, against same-sex marriage and all those things. But we come back to, again, some of the idea that you need to be respectful. In 2001, he visited, uh, visited a hospice for AIDS patients. Now, that's an issue that has a lot of church leaders sometimes uncomfortable. And he visited this hospice of this AIDS patients, and he washed and bathed the feet of these dying AIDS victims. So he does combine a certain orthodoxy, traditional orthodoxy, that uh, many have come to associate with Roman Catholicism. On the other hand, he also embodies the, the greatest parts of all Christian faiths, and that is compassion. And uh, that is what, again, he is going to stake his ministry on, compassion for the poor, for those who need a leg up, for mercy, and for helping others who need the help. Yes, I, I know this will anger some people, but it is loving the sinner and hating the sin. He can say no to homosexual behavior, but wash the feet of gay men with AIDS. He can say, I love you, but I cannot affirm the way you behave. That's a, an, an essential aspect of Catholic teaching. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, and probably, Michael, no matter which cardinal was chosen, those who simply do not like the Catholic Church were going to 
pick and scratch or whatever. But yeah. in this particular pope, we see again someone who is compassionate, probably chosen by the cardinals. You know, one with the buzz around the Vatican right mm. now for his prayerfulness, yes. his humility. You saw that in the first words he spoke, asking people to pray for him, yeah. taking a moment of silence. And I'll tell you, he absolutely won over the hearts of the I crowd know, on St. Peter's Square. David, I envy you, but uh, you're doing a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you so very much, my friend.